Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mies Near Media tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at fixing a super washed out shot that is just a bunch of flare in it and it's just, it, it looked cool on the camera, but in the computer, it does not work. So here in Resolve, we've got this shot and you can see, you know, it's a, a very producty shot and it, it just doesn't really work. This was shot luckily for us in RAW on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. So we can, you know, get some life out of this. If you look real close, you can just barely see there's a logo that, you know, the company would probably want in this shot. So the first thing we're going to do is actually, funnily enough, we're not going to do general corrections starting off. We're just going to start straight ahead with doing sort of isolated things. So since this is a product thing, we want the logo. So we're going to add a little circle window here and feather it all the way out. And we're going to maybe not even that big about there. And we're going to just add a bunch of contrast to it. So you can see there's that, feather it out some more. And now we can at least see a little bit of the logo happening in there. So we'll go ahead and center this on our subject. And we're reading pretty close to where we wanna be there. And then we'll hit Alt-O, and that will create an outside node. So we're affecting the opposite part of the image. And we're just gonna go ahead to our curves. And we're gonna make sure that we have all of our little guys selected, all of our curves selected. We're gonna darken this down some. So there we go. Let's go ahead and expand our little mask out here to get a little more of our area in. Nice. And we'll go ahead and add a little bit of saturation to this, our outside node. So now we've come along, we can already see a little bit of the logo here, but in another node, we will do even more. So Alt S again, and then we're going to use a linear one, a linear window, I should say. Just going to do a little rough selection around the logo. And since this is a stationary locked off shot, we don't need to worry about tracking it, which is pretty nice. We're going to feather stuff way the heck out. And we're going to bring our lift way down in gamma. So you see that's looking pretty bad. So we'll move this around until it looks slightly less bad. So there we go. We're starting to get a little, little bit of the logo being seen. And then since we added some contrast there, that's bumping up the saturation a little bit more than we want. So we'll go ahead and dial that back down so it sort of fits the rest of the shot. And to top it off, we will go ahead and add some mid-tone detail there. And now we can see a logo popping through, which is pretty nice. So it's still not a great looking shot. And we'll turn the saturation down a little bit more on this. So it blends in a little better. And that's a little bit sticky outy still, but that's not bad. Increase the saturation of this guy a little more. Coolio, decrease this one. Okay. Now we can start doing a little more general corrections since this is flattened out a bit. So I'll hit Alt S and I'll go ahead and bump our saturation back up just a little bit so you can see what we're doing. And then over to our curves, I'll go ahead and add some little stylizey bits. So we'll bring our blues down just a bit and that will bring yellows into our highlights as you can see. And we'll bring our blues and our shadows up just a little bit. You don't want to overdo this or else it looks really cheap. But if you just do it a little bit, then people think that you're super hip. Another technique I like to do is bring it right back in, in this little bottom point here, just so you get a little bit of that taste in there. Then we'll also add some reds to the highlights because this is a sunset shot. So we got that. Don't want to take too much out of the shadows, just a little bit. And then green, taking that out of the shadows just a little bit, we'll add some magenta in there, which will even out our shot a nice little bit. And now if you zoom in, we can see we're getting some noise in there. So luckily, since this is a stationary shot, if you have Resolve Studio, Shift S to add a node beforehand, and add this at the very beginning, and I will even name it because this is a tutorial and I want to show off to an R for noise reduction. Since this is a stationary shot, it works really well with the temporal noise reduction, which is really good. So I'll set it to two frames. And temporal noise reduction basically looks in the movement of the shot and sees, um, he uses that to figure out what's noise. So if you get a lot of movement, and then I just ran into this on a project, you get a lot of movement and you try and use temporal noise reduction with a bunch of frames, it ends up looking like, um, like a bad optical flow time remapping. But, you know, with an easy shot like this, I can just turn up to 100 and boom. You know, it's still, Temporal noise reduction, if you do it right, stays way sharper than spatial noise reduction. So like that just looks like, you know, my camera can actually handle what we're doing to it and not, you know, like it can't. So there's that. And now the shot's kind of a little bit dead looking. So we can add a little bit of life 
in here we'll go to our luma curve and brighten it up just a little bit we don't want too much of that what we're going to do is scoot all that up some and then since i'm still not happy with what's going on in this outside node we're going to try and figure that out so i'll move our black point in a little bit i think that's going to fix it up for me yeah that evens it out a little bit nicer and go ahead and leave an add a little bit of color boost because i'm too lazy to do it another way so yeah and now the thing that's really sticking out to me is this blue part which is probably fine but you know, it is a complementary color to this, but I don't really want it in there as much as it is. So we're going to go to Hue versus Saturation. Just pick that color, and that's not quite enough. So bring it way out, and it's really towards the green side, and that's much nicer. If we're really hardcore, we could even change the hue on it some just so it fits in a little better, but that's not going to look very good. So now I've got something looking pretty good. We'll go ahead and just add a little bit of flavor on top of that. Since we got rid of all the grain, I will add a little bit of film grain to it. I'll change this to, this one is fun. How does that look just on its own? We could use a little bit more. So I'll switch this to grain only so we can see what we're doing. I don't want any such, well, barely any. Increase the texture a little bit, increase the size, increase the softness. And then we will increase the opacity just a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. So, you know, if you're one of those people that's really afraid of grain, don't do this part. But if you're me and you really like grain, do this part. And then just because we always do this, we'll get back some of the original character of this shot, add some glow in. We will you know, make it one of these. Increase our relative spread red and decrease our relative spread blue, which will give it a more of an orangey feel as well. So will be cool. I will increase the brightness, but decrease the opacity. And then finally, I will just add one more. I should add this beforehand. So shift before this guy too. Shift S, just because I'm getting a little bit too much interest over here, not enough right where the logo matters, is I will add one of these gradients pull it up like that bring our gamma down just to not even that much see what happens if i even push it a little bit towards blue that's pretty cool so now we have some color contrast in the shot yeah i like what that did a lot so just a little subtle thing but it makes it look you know a little more interesting and now this guy doesn't pop out as much and now this you know it's still not the most readable thing which is why i didn't end up using the shot and made a tutorial about it instead so anyway, I hope you liked this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike, no matter what you're feeling, down in the comments below. If you want this footage and the project file and the power grade, be sure to check out my Patreon page where we've got all sorts of good stuff for those of you who want it. If you don't want it, you know, just keep watching the videos for free and subscribe to the Mission Media YouTube channel, which is full of great stuff. Mostly DaVinci Resolve stuff, but occasionally we go in crazy other directions, which I think is fun and other people do not. But, you know, also, if you're into it, check out meastonmedia.com slash products. We have all sorts of cool stuff that will help you make your stuff look better. So one thing I did when I was trying this shot is I will save real quick and then control Y, reset all grades and nodes. As I do this a lot whenever I don't know what I'm going to do with the grade is I use the Carnival Power Grades. So over here we've got Carnival, load up nice and quick, and then you can just sort of start dragging grades on and be like, oh, that's cool, but I don't want that. Or... Hank. Hank's always a fun one. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty neat. It's pretty hip. Uh, Chapo. That's cool. Like, you know, that almost works right there. Why did I do all that work? Because you can't see the logo still. But, you know, you can add in your other little nodes and do that. That is a really cool one. So, go check that out. Carnival Power Grades, House Lutz, some free stuff on there. Once again, I've been Theo with Mies New Media. We have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.